Let us start these lessons by defining the policy search problem. So let's take a simple and actually existing example of a robot whose role is to collect balls. I will take the case of a very cheap tennis ball collector where the robot does not have a ball sensor. So the only option is to wander more or less randomly on a tennis court so as to collect the balls. So we will consider the case where the robot comes with a parameterized controller and we will play with the parameters and our performance will be the number of balls collected in a given time. We could use different performance but this one is easy to understand. And of course this performance just depends on the robot trajectories and on the ball positions. So as parameters for our controller let's take the probability of turn per time step and the traveling speed. Here you have one with a low probability of turning and a maybe low traveling speed and these ones are higher probability of turning and maybe this one a higher traveling speed. Okay. The question will be how do the parameters influence the performance and the problem of policy search will consist in finding the optimal policy parameters so as to maximize the performance. The point is that this performance can be highly stochastic. There are actually two sources of stochasticity. The first is in the position, position of the balls. Here you have the same trajectory but you have different ball positions and you will see if you count that you don't get the same number of balls from the same trajectory if the balls are positioned differently. The other source of stochasticity can be the policy itself. For the same position of balls, the same controller may turn in different places, so generate a different trajectory. So if you think of it, the performance of our robot can vary a lot from situation to situation. So to estimate the performance, we will need to repeat and to take several trajectories to have an idea of whether this parameter is better than this one. So tuning the parameters can be very hard because we need to repeat the trajectory several times to get an idea of what is good and what is bad. Now we have all the elements to formalize the policy search problem. First we will consider a set of trajectories that we will note to i. Second we will consider the return of these trajectories. We will note it r of to i and in our problem this is the number of balls collected by the robot over trajectories. And third we will consider a robot controller p of theta that's a parameterized where con controller where theta is the set of parameters. And we want to optimize some performance depending of the par on the parameters theta. We note it g of theta. And this performance is the expectation over all the possible trajectories tau generated by the controller p of theta. So that's the expectation of the reward over the trajectory. And that's what we call the global utility function. Now we want to tune the policy parameters theta so as to maximize this function of theta. Choose our goal is to find the optimal policy parameters theta star, which is the theta that gives the max uh, g of theta. And it can be restated as a sum over all possible trajectories of the probability of a trajectory given the parameters theta times the reward of this trajectory. So a first approach to solve this optimization problem is called direct policy search and it is a black box optimization problem. What does it mean? It means that if g of theta is the performance of our policy parameters, the way to optimize theta is as follows. We choose a particular theta, we generate a set of trajectories to theta, we get the return g of theta corresponding to these trajectories. We look for a better theta and again and again. So it means that we don't have access to a formal function um, associating g of theta to the parameters theta. We have to try the parameters theta to get the feedback about their performance. So direct policy search uses pairs theta g of theta and directly look for theta with a higher g of theta. The most basic direct policy search approach would be called truly random search. 
I say here truly because there are some algorithms that are called random search which are which are not completely random. So what's truly random search? The idea is that you take a set of parameters theta randomly, you evaluate their performance. If the performance is the best so far, you keep these parameters and you loop until some termination criterion and for instance your termination criterion could be that you have a target performance and as soon as you get parameters that give you a performance that is higher than your target you can stop. Of course this is not at all an efficient uh, algorithm if the space of policy parameter is large. You may search randomly for a long while before finding this peak for instance. Okay, But that's a very general blind algorithm which needs no assumption at all on the performance function. Of course we can do better if the performance function in the parameters theta shows some local regularity. So more standard direct policy search algorithms use a locality assumption. They consider that the function g of theta is locally smooth which means that good solutions are close to each other. So if you found a good solution, probably a good idea is to, is to look around this good solution. So these algorithms can be generalized under a general form which is variation selection. So you get your best solution so far, you perform a few variations around this solution and you will select the best one and do it again and again. Okay. And generally, variations are controlled using a multivariate Gaussian because that's a nice way to have a high probability to draw something which is very close to what you got before and eventually to draw something uh, which is further away but uh, with a lower probability. The alternative approach to variation selection would be gradient ascent. The idea is that if, you knew, if we knew the function g of theta, we could compute the derivative of the function g of theta uh, close to the point where we are and follow the direction of ascending gradient so as to go to a local optimum. Okay? The issue is that in general and this function g of theta is unknown. If you consider the robot example, it is very very, ha very hard to know whether by tuning this parameter in this way, I will increase or decrease my performance. So the question, the central question in this class is how can we apply gradient ascent without knowing the g of theta function? And the answer is the policy gradient theorem and this is what we will see in the next lessons. If you have any question, don't hesitate to ask.